All right. Live from St. Augustine, it's Saturday night. Woo! I'm really excited to introduce our first speaker because he was my first chiropractor. And I wanted to read this B.J. Palmer co uh, quote. You never know how far reaching something you may think, say, or do today will affect the lives of millions tomorrow. And now my daughter's in chiropractic school, and, and I've recently found out two of my former patients actually teach at Palmer, Florida. So all that is a Started branch of the, the, of the Clark Monahan tree. So without further ado, Dr. Clark Monahan. Smart people in this town, so I don't know if I can teach you anything. But we got to get something out of the way, though. That uh, Dr. Hartley was a patient of mine when he was ten. Okay. Uh, I think I don't know. If, you know I, I hope I'm not breaking any hip about it. I think that Nita was a patient when she was fifteen. Is that right? Or no? Fifteen. Marty was a patient, my son, when he was five. Okay. We'll get that out of the way. Anyway. I came to St. Augustine in 1975, and I really didn't have two nickels to rub together. And I was sleeping in the back of my hay bed, my, my big hatchback. And it went around the state and so forth, and, and it wasn't bad because I, I pulled up to a public beach. They got a shower in the morning, uh, uh, palm trees. And, uh, every once in a while, a girl in a bikini would walk by and say, wow, man, I, I made it, you know? And, uh, and so, uh, it was all good, and I ended up in St. Augustine. And uh, I remember my first patient. His name was Mr. Wilson, and he had a left shoulder pain. And I didn't know much about the left shoulder. I still don't know much about the left shoulder, but I worked on it, and he said, geez, I feel a little bit better. And he gave me $6 for my office visit. And I said, $6? I said, wow, I made it. I'm going to make it in this profession. You know? And so life got good. It was the I was practically one room, one, one receptionist, one table. And I used Dr. Pastorski's philosophy, who taught me and mentored me in school. Uh, he, was, uh, uh, he had a practice, uh, he taught me the benefits of lecturing. He says, educate, educate, educate. Uh, down in his basement, he used to have lay lectures, and I remember as well. He, he helped me go through school and, and start a practice that accelerated very quickly. And it wasn't long that I was seeing 50, 60 patients a day. My biggest day it was 93, I believe. And it was good for a long time like that. But then I had some health issues. And um, my left leg, uh, I had huge varicosity, big varicosity in my left leg. And uh, my ankle started to ulcerate and turn black. And so it was a, it was a, I was in a crisis, really. I had to elevate ice compression and all this. I went to Mayo Clinic. They said, you can't take that. And uh, uh, it's just too bad. You just got to keep doing what you're doing. I went to Gainesville. And the guy says, well, uh, uh, it's a mess. We can do it, but you're in the hospital for three weeks with thousands of stitches, and it's a mess. And he discouraged me. So I finally ran into this guy, and uh, he, uh, he had a vein, vein clinic, and he was early. This was, this was probably early 90s. And he examined me. And uh, he was talking at the Northeast Florida Chiropractic Society at uh, uh, that time. And he examined me, and he, he looked at me and he says, Clark, he says, I can, uh, I can fix your leg. Uh, take about a half hour, and you'll be back to work the next day. Yeah. I said, wow. <laughs> you know, how is he going to do that? So I go back to Mayo Clinic. And I said, I must be a mistake. Uh, and they examined me again. And they said, it's no mistake. You can't touch your leg, it's going to swell up like a watermelon, and you're going to be in a medical crisis for the rest of your life. <coughs> so I went over to Gainesville, and I researched it all. This is before all the n internet and so forth. I had a stack of papers this, this thick, and I went into the guy, and I said, I said, what about this? What about that? What about this? And he says, Clark, I'm not going to hurt you. And I said, just do it, because this guy looks so much healthier than the Tilbury Doughboy in Mayo. <laughs> and so I, I said, just do it. Bonnie was in the room. There's a television camera in that. And boy, he, he did ultrasound guided square therapy. Had a therapist in there. And boy, he wrapped up my leg to go for a walk around the block. I did. I was back to work the next day. And my leg was perfect. It was just unbelievable. 
And so and he, he says, Clark, get your DHEA test. <coughs> and so I didn't know what DHEA was, and I did. I was very low, and it's the most abundant hormone in the body produced being on the adrenal gland. Very low, and um, I started taking it. I said, geez, I'm feeling a little better. I said, what's, what's that hold with this hormone stuff? And so I started studying hormones uh, for both men and women, uh, bioidentical hormones. And uh, it's not complicated. We all have the same hormones, just different levels. And I'm not afraid of hormones. I've been taking hormones for 40 years. Bonnie's been taking testosterone for forever. Thank God for testosterone if you're low. So I'd never take a hormone to enhance anything, but I would take a hormone to raise a low level to a normal level. I don't want a high hormone. I don't want a low hormone. This is what all this anti-aging business is about, is about balancing hormones. So every year I go in and I get tests. I need two hormones. Nobody tests these, DHEA and prednisolone. So we can, we can buy it at Walmart. The doctors don't recommend it, but it's as important as testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, whatever. No hormone is more important than any other hormone. They're all equally important. So you have to test them all. Gold standard is blood. Some people use saliva. I use that didn't work. And, uh, and so I started studying balancing hormones. And, uh, and so then, um, he, I said to the doctor, I said, doctor, uh, my ankle, I mean, my leg looks perfect, but I'm, it's still a little black. Uh, you know, it was ulcerated, the ulcer went away, but it was still black. He said, chelation will help that. So I didn't know what chelation was, so I sat in the chelation room, I did it for 10 times, it was a three hour bag, and it pulls environmental toxins out of your body. It just detoxifies your body. I did a hair analysis one time, I was loaded with lead, I was loaded with mercury, with 100% probability of accuracy with the amount of mercury that comes out of your hair parallels the amount of mercury in your, uh, in your brain according to cadaver studies. So I was going to have a problem. And after I went through this chelation, nine months later, you, you could see that I, I leached uh, those poisons out of my body. Not completely, but most of the poisons were out of my body. And uh, most of it comes from mercury. So I bought a mercury drone analyzer, and I, I, I had to go in with the patient when I take the lateral cervical. I see those mercury drones in there, and they leak gas all the time, especially when you drink something hot. You want an interesting YouTube, YouTube uh, uh, smoking tube. It'll show these these plumes of gas come off that, that, that tube. This is not silver flowing, it's 55% mercury, and mercury is a very, very toxic substance. And I was loaded with I was also loaded with lead. And that made sense. I lived in a house for 25 years, but it was that. So it's all lead based paint, all lead pipes and stuff like this. So I was going to be a problem. And the testimonies when I was sitting with these 10 people for 10 times kind of blew me away. I said, uh, you know, the, the, the angina went away, the uh, uh, cancers uh, improved. Uh, when you get the poisons out of your body, you just start feeling better and you, and you start healing. And I said, I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And so I, what I did is I quit my chiropractic corporation and I started a medical corporation. Florida is one of the few states you can do that. You, you don't have to be a medical doctor to own a medical clinic. You can be a plumber. I happen to be a chiropractor. So I started a medical clinic uh, 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 10 years into my practice. So I'm into practice 48 years, I think now. And, um, and I had a hard time getting an MD. I, I, I hired five, six MDs. I took them to the seminar to get certified in chelation and hormones and all this other kind of stuff. They couldn't figure out how to, to get away from just writing a script and sitting back. And, uh, and uh, it was easy to get a medical doctor, but I couldn't find the right one. One guy, one guy, you know, he, he wanted this, he wanted this, and, then I, and I fired him, and I fired a few of them. And um, <laughs> he came in Monday morning, and he was back packing up his boxes. And I said, what are you doing? He said, these are my patients. I said, patients are my patients. Yeah. He wouldn't leave. He kept doing it. He said, a little belligerent. I said, call the police. You know? And um, so police come in the office, and I said, uh, and he kept yelling at the police. He's not even a doctor. He's not a doctor, he said. And I spent $5,000 a month on advertising. I said, I'm officer, have you ever heard of Dr. Monahan? He said, yeah. I said, well, that's me. This is my building. Get his ass out of my building. You know? <laughs> and that's what happened. And, uh, but anyway, I found a doctor that was like-minded, 
And, uh, it was, and he was with me for 25 years. We never had an argument. Dr. Stephen Vrabel, he's an, he's an internist, he's an MD, uh, uh, just a, a, a extremely well read. And so he was the overseer for the last 25 years of, of the clinic. I got involved in oxygen, hyperbaric oxygen. I bought a chamber about 25 years ago. Based on, on brain healing, uh, Daniel Amen, he's got 17 of the exact uh, uh, chamber I have. Uh, and he had PET scans. And so did, there's a guy named um, Paul Harsh that wrote a book called uh, um, uh, uh, Hyperbaric Solution. And he had the same, didn't uh, the same, but he had every imaginable brain. He had a stroke brain, he had MS, Parkinson, atrophy lobes. And you would see the lobes grow back after oxygen treatment. You see a red, dead piece of tissue in a person's brain that had a stroke, and went from, went from red to blue to green. Ten years after a stroke, you can get function <coughs> back in your limbs with hyperbaric oxygen. If you have a broken bone, or you have a burn, oxygen supercharges heat in the body. So we incorporated the oxygen. We got the chelation. We got the uh, uh, bioidentical. Then I ended up with a root canal. Okay. I had a lot of root canals. And uh, I started studying root canals. And so I, 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 I ended up going to a dentist in California uh, for a total mouth re re uh, restoration. And it was one of the best things I was able to do, really, uh, because he uh, had a new technique of cleaning out the root canals with a hot laser and using a substance called biocalyx or something. To. And uh, he redid that, Every, all the metal on my mouth. There's a lot of meridians in the mouth and so forth. And so uh, uh, Bonnie got so upset that every time I had a toothache, I'd go up to California and get on the plane trip. <laughs> you know, thank God we're moving. And so uh, uh, I couldn't find it. There's a movement in dentistry called the International Academy of Oral Toxic Medicine. And they're like the fellow out in California, Dr. Richard Hansen. And so I found him in Ormond Beach. And I said, God, it's a godsend for me because I don't have to get on a plane every time. And he does removal of fillings using what they call the, uh, uh, the, the protocol by uh, Al Huggins, who was the dentist that first said, hey, there's not good to have mercury filling. So when you have mercury filling taken out, you can't just take it out. You can't have it drilled out in the room. You have to have an oxygen mask. He has to have an oxygen mask. There's a huge vacuum that just sucks everything away. Because it's like a nuclear bomb. And so, so uh, and we got to be friends, and, uh, and uh, I said, listen, I'll set you up with an operatory in my office, and you can go out filling, treat people. When I x-ray them, I can see them, I'll send them right over to you. And I did. We had all digital x-ray, and we had a hygienist come in, and so you can come in, you know, to get your teeth done. You know, get a, get a clonic, uh, a, a detox, you know, jump in a hyperbaric chamber without being hooked up to the So anyway, uh, life was good, and, uh, and and it ran smooth for about 25 years, uh, and, but it evolved. And that one time, I was just moved to bones, high line, moved to bones, and that was good too. But this is complementary medicine, and I'd like to say that that once a, a year, on the east uh, on the east coast, there's a movement of, of a worldwide movement uh, of, uh, of reform and repentance. MDs and DOs, okay? And they understand, they don't just put you on a, a drug. It's called A with a, a number for M. A for M. And I go every year, Bonnie and I sit in the front row, and, and that's, and I suck it up like a sponge because they're, they're way ahead uh, of the complementary medicine. And that's what we do is complementary. That's what Dr. Brady likes to call it, not alternative. It's, it it complements everything. Uh, I, I thought there was going to be students here, but there's not, and I'm trying to deal with talk to how I want to hear it from it. Uh, chiropractic was my first love, and, and adjusting people was, was, was the backbone of the clinic, hands down. And I, I, love, I was just blessed to be able to be a chiropractor for, for 48 years. I've been retired, really, for 48 years. That's the way I put it. I just love it, and I, I'm never going to. 
just don't want to die on a patient. <laughs> no, get me off. Get him off. <laughs> no, no. But anyway. We can uh, talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I, uh, I still, I sold my clinic uh, uh, a couple of years ago, and I worked for Marty uh, part-time. I worked for uh, the guy I sold it to part-time in a little office in my, my house. You know, I played around with it and stuff like that. So it was great. I mean, I just got picked. Picked right out of the bowels of Detroit. Uh, uh, and, uh, not like the suburbs, like some people I know in Detroit. So Dr. Warfield, I gotta mention Dr. Warfield. And also, uh, if you know, we can use that, can I just say a few words? You know, uh, sure, uh, uh, as long as you don't talk about me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> no. Dr. Warfield yeah. was in the first graduating class of life, and he is super smart. Yeah. My son is super smart. Dr. Warfield taught dissection uh, uh, at, at Life uh, after he graduated and uh, gross anatomy. And my brother was in his class, who was also a chiropractor. And he called me up one time and he says, Well, what do you want me to do with your brother? I said, My brother, give him an A. You know, he was the only A he ever got in his whole life. <laughs> and he got in trouble for it afterwards. But I was best man at Stephen's wedding twice. 18 years apart. Is that the best man or what? That's the best man. I love him to death. Marty, Marty is, Marty tested out of just about everything. I never saw him just on the book because he got a photographic memory. He's so smart, he knows not to mess with him. Amen. That's how smart Amen. he is. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, any questions or comments? Or? I hope you enjoyed it. And it, it was 18 days short of 18 years, so just so oh. you're crystal clear. And I got, finally got it right. Thank, thank you, sweet Lord Jesus. So a, a, a few things. Number one, this young man is probably the smartest human being I've ever met. He <coughs> really indirectly saved my life when I got sick and directed me and guided me and even to this day with the type of uh, health care that he practices it is way beyond what most people could ever imagine. So Dr. Tom is going to be the next speaker and he is a legend and I was in the first graduating class of life blessed enough to go to DE and Sid would come in our classroom every day and give us a good philosophy lecture. And I was blessed to see Tom in action, the DE, and um, we are blessed to have him here. He is, Amen. He is the, the best there is. He is a legend in his own. But all things being equal, I am no slouch, but I know character. I know the Lord, and I know character. And this man is the best human being that I ever met. He was my angel because here I graduated from life. I had a 66 Chevy panel truck with 200 plus thousand miles and not a nickel to get the, 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 to owe. I and saved my hatch back. Right. So here I come to Clark because I saw him all the time when he was visiting his brother. I said, Clarky, I just passed the Florida uh, board, but I don't know. I don't have any money. I, I got to get in practice and help my mom. My father died in, when I was in professional school. He goes, you know, I need a vacation and sleep on the cot and I got a stand-up shower and just take over the practice for a couple of weeks and I'll feed you for a while. And then he co-signed for a $10,000 loan for me to get into practice and without him, I would have been toast. Mm -hmm. And I worked really, really hard and I would like to say that I had one of the biggest practices in Jacksonville for probably 20 plus years. Uh, but I owe my whole entire professional life for that sweet soul. And I love him. Whether if, I, if he was a woman, I'd marry him. <laughs> Thank you for that lead in to our next speaker. Um, who, um, so, you know, we all talked about uh, you never know how something you think or say or do will affect the lives of millions tomorrow. I know you've certainly affected my life, but your next speaker actually helped me get started. 
you know, I got out of school and had really sort of no idea what to do. And it wasn't because of school, it was because of me. <laughs> and so I looked, literally looked all over the world for a place to practice, and Tom hired me in South Florida. <laughs> so I ended up kind of near where I had started and gave me direction and instruction and a way to be successful in practice. So not only do I owe my interest in chiropractic to Clark, I owe my success in practice to what I learned from you. So Tom Pastersky is a 1970-something graduate of Logan College. You can't remember when. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is priceless. <laughs> and uh, he was in the Marine Corps, so he's a veteran as well. And um, welcome. Dr. Thomas. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you started Saturday Night Live, did you talk about that? Yeah, I no. guess so. Okay. Anyway, guys, thanks for having me here. I'll be here for the rest of my speech. <laughs> <laughs> no, guys, I know most of you. But how can you explain what's going on for a lifetime? Am I here supposed to motivate you? No, I don't want to motivate you. Be honest, I'm not here for you. I'm not here for you. I'm here for patience. I'm here for the patience that don't get adjusted, okay? They don't know squat about what you do. Have you, I'll give you an example. Have you ever had somebody, you say, I'm a chiropractor. Okay, that's good, oh, that's good. I went to a chiropractor in Washington and cracked my neck. How many times you heard that? You like that? But that's what happens, isn't it true? Over and over again. Are you gonna put up with that? So what are you gonna do about it? What are you gonna do about it? what it is, but what it isn't as well. Because they don't know, and they won't know unless you tell them. But I tell you what, if you lose yourself in serving the Lord, you will never be disappointed. And you may not have the strength or the wisdom or the whatever to think that you can, and you can't, but he can. As simple as that, it's as complex as that. So if you say you don't like, oh, I, I don't like my neck cracked. I ain't going to no quack and packer. Well, true. What are you going to do with that? Lay down and let them walk on your face? Or are you going to stand up and be a chiropractor? You know, I was in the Marine Corps. Was I in the service? No, I was in the Marine Corps. You know, sorry about that. Oh, yeah. Forgive me. Forgive me, my brother. But it's not, I, actually, I'm not sorry at all, okay? <laughs> but I don't want to confuse you. So, guys, I think of these little people. You see the people on the corner? Who's adjusting them? You see the people with this or this or this? Now, I, I'm not here to tell you how to be doctors. Honestly, I'm just not that wise. I love it that I'm not that wise. I don't want that kind of wisdom. I want simplicity, only simplicity, and I want everything going to God, not to me. So do chiropractors heal? No way. Do medical doctors or whatever you think you're doing heal? No, it doesn't. I know, Jesus knows that only God heals. Adriana gave you this. <laughs> My wife, Adriana. There's no money in it. <laughs> You know, you think you know somebody and then marry them. So I'm going to read this because I don't know why. You got to understand, I don't know why. All I, I prepared nothing. I read the scripture. I prayed a lot. I tried to just say, God, whatever you say. I don't really care. I'm not a people pleaser. I'm not here to please you. I'm not here to please anyone except my Lord. And you may or may not like it. I don't really care. I do care, but I don't care. I love him more than I love you. So 
So here's what Adriana said. By the way, it's not Adriana, that's you gringos. Okay, Adriana is Espanol. And I'm studying Espanol, and I still don't know anything except Fado, if you guys know what that means, if you don't forget it. So Ephesians 2, 8, 9. And I don't even know why I'm reading this, but it means something. And I don't know what. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, lest not of works, lest anyone should boast. And we all talk about how we want to be successful, how we want to see people take care of. You saved by what? Grace. Faith. 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 You saved by faith. It's the gift of God. And Jesus Christ on the on the on the cross. I got diagnosed with bladder cancer a while back. Okay, who cares, right? And I I mean that. Who cares? So the the ladies at the church. I was actually in the choir at the time, and uh, I couldn't tap dance, so I had to be in the choir. And uh, they said, "Oh, Thomas, we'll pray for you." And I says, "Okay, what are you going to pray for?" "Oh, for your healing." I says, "No, no, 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 no." What Jesus did on the cross, he says, Father, take this from me, if it, but not my will, but yours be done. So how, what else are you going to say? What are you going to do with your life? Whether you're a chiropractor, a chiropractic wife, a chiropractic husband, whatever it is. We got to be right in there with the Lord because he is the one that heals. So, you know, what I've learned is that what you do in your private life means a lot. It means a lot. You think God's going to send you people when you're looking at the chicks and say, whoa, 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 whoa. No, you can't do that. He loves you, but it doesn't mean that you get away with everything. So I don't know your dreams, but I know this. People need to be adjusted. Now, I, I'm Clark, you're a genius. Your son may be a genius genius, but you're a genius. I don't, I, I don't know, but I don't get it. I'm like, uh, okay, where's the table? That's all I know. And if you ain't got a table, lay on the floor. But I don't bend that far, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts. Yeah, that's another thing. When you're taking care of pain, how many old farts in this room? There's enough to know that when you're old, you're going to hurt. Oh, what, can, doctor, can you help my pain? Oh, yeah, I can help. Get real. Don't make you get adjusted or not, you're gonna hurt. You're gonna get old farts and you're gonna hurt. That's my time. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on, let me let me play. Well listen guys, that concludes my, my talk. Uh, and I just want to thank you. <laughs> and <laughs> I can't help it. I know. Uh, come on in, sit down, have a seat. <laughs> you just scoot on by. Give me a hug if you pass by, bro. Um, God bless you. Good to see you. Ageless. You're ageless. Which means like old wine, I'm aged. <laughs> That's all that means. I'm so new wine skin. I'm gonna do new wine skin. So all I'm saying is a lot that we need chiropractors. Now what I'm not talking about is straight versus mixing. Okay? That's I'm not gonna use all the words I think I, I'm thinking on this. We don't need that stuff. Now, you wanna do that stuff? Good. I went through a period, man, I had a sine wave, electro stem, I had ultrasound, I had track, I had this, I had that, and everything, okay? And that's okay. I'm not saying, don't get into the hate straight mode. We don't need that stuff anymore. You have freedom to do what you want to do and what works best for you. Each one of us got different color hairs, some of you got no hair, but that's another story. So, I didn't say that. So, <laughs> no, don't, don't be mad at me now. So the point is, I'm dead mad. So the thing is that we need to recognize that we're all different, but we can unite on this. Adjust them and make sure it's not just cracking bone. I just can't understand when people, <coughs> it hurts me, would say, uh, will you crack my neck? Do you know why? Because you didn't talk to them. So I'm going to ask each one of you to commit personally to give us a weekly Orientation. We don't call it a lecture. It's a weekly orientation. Because if you get them down on that table and say, what are you doing, Doc? It's your fault. If they come in a month later and say, Doc, it still hurts. It's your fault. 
Not because you haven't healed, but you haven't explained that we're not here to treat pain. We're here to just remove subluxations. That's it. Now, I'm not saying don't do the rest. If you want to, you, I don't like that hate straight stuff. Because, boy, that was in the old days. That was like horrible. Mm -hmm. Split. No more. Don't do that. Relish and appreciate what they do. But we, we need absolutely, whatever else you do, is know that a chiropractic adjustment can change his life. Mm -hmm. They may not understand it, but it's the simplicity of chiropractic. I was reading about the first adjustment by D.D. Palmer. Some of you know, some of you don't know. And that is a deaf man, Harvey Lillard, that was adjusted or slammed in his neck, well, that's what it was. They often had bloody noses when it was done, and he got his hearing back. Let me ask you guys something. No, no, no. Don't give me yes or no. Is it? Have you ever had the hearing come back in a patient? What? Have you? I don't want to know. No, that's giving credit to you. I don't want nobody to say anything. Have you had miracles in your office lately? Some have. Some haven't. But God is a miracle worker. And so when you have that happen, don't you dare say, look what I did in chiropractic. God should give the glory. One of the scriptures that I don't know that I read about 4,000 times is that even Jesus Christ said this, it is, not, it is not I, but my Father in heaven who does these things. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, it is not I, but my Father in heaven. So who, what should we do? Should we not give God the glory? Are we Amen. so, are we not, are we so idealistic that I did it? You want more miracles? Give God the glory. Don't give chiropractic glory. You Listen, you want a volume practice? I can tell you about volume, volume practice. It's, it's work and it's suffering and sacrifice. So first know Jesus as Christ, your Lord and Savior. You know what the word Christ means? Who knows? It's the anointed one. That's what it means. The Messiah. If you're Jewish, whatever. Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one, the chosen one, the Son of God. God, but the Son of God. What do you do with this? Preach it. Because you guys know what's going on in this world right now. There's so much going on, and accept it as normal, and it's not normal. So you talk about the pain, what about the relationship of how the body works? Can you do something to get people off of drugs? Can you give them, do you want to, I don't feel like orientations, I don't feel like it. But where are you going to tell them that God heals? Are you going to take the credit? Yes, we can heal you, Mrs. Jones. That's a lie. And if you take credit for it, no. So it's time to get real. I'm an old fart, okay? I love being an old fart. I do. It's like, you know, it's good. The other, uh, I tell you about this story. I had get diagnosed with a bladder cancer. And uh, I was, believe it or not, I was singing in a church here at the time. And uh, I will tap dance for you later, but singing there. And uh, my little church ladies there were up there. And they were saying, oh, Thomas, we'll pray, because they, they knew about it. I said, we'll pray for your healing. And I go, uh, no, don't do that. They go, what? Well, you know, because they're so sweet. They're little, you know, little, little And uh, I says, no, don't do that. Because as a Christian, when I die, you know the verse, when you close eyes here, you open up to the face of the Lord. So if I die, I get to see his face. If I live, I'm still going to be tap dancing and singing. Okay, so either way, and being married, that drop. I mean, what else is there? So either way, I'm a winner. God's blessing me. So you don't see the winning side, the blessing in the sickness. Some of these people that you've got coming in may need to be sick for their God to get their attention. So who knows? I don't know what, but understand there's a possibility 
God is almighty God. And we have been gifted with a thing called chiropractic. Who knows what the word chiropractic means? Done by him. Who said that? Have you been to, you know, this is a friend from 400 years ago. You're right, it's done by him. Look it up, it's in Greek. Which one? Okay. Reverend so, Weed. Huh? Reverend Weed. That was the guy that told DJ, or DD. Yeah. The Greek scholar. Well, so here's the thing, guys, that I would love you to adjust the world. Remember, we just talked about that in DD. Okay, have you lost that dream? So yeah, if you have a minute left with a sick person, what are you going to do for that person? Are you going to even tell them about adjustment? Or are you just say, get on the table, boom, I'm done. Now, I'm not saying flip and channels or anything like that. All I'm saying is you are called to be a chiropractor or a chiropractor's husband or a chiropractor's wife, but nonetheless that is a calling that you can use to glorify God. Is there anything more important in your life than that? And if there is, get rid of it. Mm -hmm. There is nothing more important. Whether you're sick or you're well, don't matter. You want to serve him. Because at the end of this life, and we're all going to end, Jesus, I hope he will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Is there anything in this world that's more important than that? Even being healthy, is that more important than being healthy? Yes. So I don't care about health. I rejoice if I'm sick. I rejoice when I'm well. I don't like when I'm sick. I didn't say that. Well, we all got stuff. We had a really good practice in St. Louis. We practiced there, I don't even know how many years, seven to nine years, or who cares. Um, and we'd give a lecture every week. We call it a lecture back then. And for you, you have to come and accept me as your doctor, but I have to accept you as a patient. And if you don't come, you don't come. And that's how it was, because I ain't playing. I ain't gonna say, just crack my back. You ever hear that? That's your fault, because you never set them down to say, this is what we do. So you gotta be real, guys, because people out there don't necessarily approve of us as much as they should, I think. But we don't want the glory. What we're gonna do is give God the glory. So when we, we have a monster practice, okay? And I don't, monster. Uh, Monster, monster, okay? Those 10 people came back every hour of the hour. Well, that's, most of the people don't say bye because they don't, they don't, they, they want to yak too much. They, they want to take the glory too much. So, I love my patients. We, I'm, it is, I don't know what to say, but we got up to somewhere around 300 something a day. How'd you do it? I didn't do it. And that's the most important thing to know. Because I walk out at the end of the day, and they say, how many you saw? I go, really? Because I didn't know. The whole idea is to get out of the way and let God work his miracle in your life. One of the things that, how, how you can bless God, we had a guy named, because it's not just chiropractic we're talking about. We're talking about eternity in heaven. Is that not important? Can we not talk about that? We just do that on Sunday. No. So, I remember this guy named Steve. He came in. I was in, where did I practice at that time? Probably St. Louis or Florida. I don't remember where I was at. Which is you. So, he came in and he had Crohn's disease, which is, you know, condition of the uh, colon. And he had it for years. He was down to 95, 95 pounds. And uh, I always, before you came in, you sat in an orientation. He says, well, I like your doc, but I don't know if I agree with all that guy healing stuff. I said, okay, Steve. And I go to the next I said, okay, lay on the table. No preaching. Get on the table. And uh, so adjust him. You know, you do it three times a week. Within, he was down to 95. Within a month, he was up to 110, 115. He says, oh, Dr. Tom, you did a great job. I said, Steve, it wasn't me. Came back another month. He gained another 10, 15 pounds. He's about to 120, 130. Wow, this is great. Wasn't me. Came back about another month. He was up another ten pounds. He says, "God's healing me." Now you tell me how important. That is. If you take the glory, even chiropractic, you take the glory. No. All your life, if Jesus Christ 
said, it is not I, but my Father that we give glory to. What about us? Do you want to have a volume practice? Do you want to be secure in your practice? Do you want to give all you got? Do you want to die and say, I wish I had done this? Don't do it. Give it all, but listen to what God's telling you. You may be a high volume guy. You may be a low volume guy. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about giving God the glory for what goes on in your office. Miracle after miracle. Another one. I got so much stuff going on. There was this guy came in. I can't turn my neck, Doc. You know how they, I'm sure you heard. Okay, so I did x rays and x and all that, because I have a doctor now. And um, so he was legally blind, which in definition means if you wore his thick goggles, he could see there's a wall. That's what he was. I said, okay. So we had a little, you know, he had those little glasses holders, they're so cute. So we took off his lay on the flat table, wasn't nothing fancy. He put his little glasses, okay, lay on down. Okay, okay. So I said, we're going to put that little bone in like that. So we adjusted him. He said, oh. And he's like sat on the table and went to get his glasses. And he put them on. He says, I can't see, I can't see. He took off his glasses. He says, oh, I can see. I go, huh? And I'm just saying, I'm just like, huh? It was like, bam, I didn't even know. I was pain in the neck adjustment. So he was walking out, and the, the front desk lady says, well, when does Dr. Tyler want to see you again? And I stepped up. I said, I don't ever want to see him again. I don't know what happened then, but it was God. And I know that I didn't want to increase my business. He got the miracle that God wanted me to. The first time this really happened that I got an idea was with my dad. My dad was old Polish school. And there ain't no such thing as a chiropractor in their life, okay? And uh, he was a hard worker. He had a spine like a rock. And he, in our family, there's a thing called multiple myeloma, which is, I call it Swiss cheese cancer. that eats up the bones. That was in my family. So my dad had it. He give, was given by Barnes Hospital in St. Louis three months to live. And so I come over on Sundays. We come over on Sundays. And I, I says, Dad, let me, let me adjust you. I ain't gonna tell you what you said. He says, nah. I said, okay, so I come back next week. Dad, let me just come into my office, let me x-ray you, know you wanna do all that stuff. No, I don't know, like that. That's, I'm gonna say it like this. That stuff don't work, okay? Fill in the blank if you want to. All right, so a couple of Sundays, I went back and there's nothing, nothing, nothing. And finally, I said, Dad, look, just get on the bed. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen old-fashioned beds. They're not like this. They're like this, okay? And they like their mattresses like that. So that's all I had to adjust on. So I was going to adjust the cervical, and I tried, but my dad was like a bull. This is one of the worst adjustments I ever did. I couldn't get no popping noise, you know, we like that. But nothing, nothing. I said, uh, and he said, when he got up, he said, ah, this, this stuff doesn't work. I said, okay, dad, I quit talking. Okay, so every Sunday I'd come back, get on the bed, Dad, okay. And finally he quit complaining, but I still never got a good adjustment. Three months later, when he was supposed to die, his spine was clear. No more. I go, how'd that happen? So the thing that I put on this little whatever that thing they put up is that do, have you seen miracles in your office lately? And if you have, have you given God the glory? Or is it your wisdom? Or is it your doctrine skills? Only God heals. And you want volume, you want more people, you want to be satisfied at home, in your office, you want to have true joy, not ha-ha happiness, but joy and give God the glory. And we're in a perfect position. I studied a little bit, oops, sorry, I can't walk yet. So, <laughs> just got my shoes on. I don't wear shoes like this, this is like this. Um, yeah, probably so. Um, anyway, so when I study about D.D. Palmer, he was in the metaphysics, guys. Okay? Big time. And there's mm -hmm. more than if you do the studies. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. And that's where the innate came in. Innate means inborn intelligence. <sighs> okay. However you want to go there, that's up to you but you got to give God the glory. And God is not innate. God is God. 
And you should not be ashamed of his name. You should not be ashamed to say, God heals, not I. Now, I tell you this. If you want to practice as stress-free, and this is not perfectly, but stress-free, and people are attracted to you, give God the glory. How can he bless an unholy man or woman? You think he's going to do that? Oh, you're just, I'm just going to bless you. No. You have to be obedient. And so what we do in our personal lives, even now, are big time. It matters. It matters. How many divorced chiropractors did I have? Tons. I don't care how much money you make. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. So the more you give it back to God, the more he's just going to say, I'm going to bless you. Because he's looking to bless. He loves us. He wants to bless us. But we got to be strong in the faith. Listen, guys, I see, and you know, so I don't mean to do this, but I see this world all that's going on. You can talk politics all you want. But biblically, we are in the end times. Okay? That's just the way it is. I don't like that. I don't care what you like. I'm not here to please you. Read your scripture. Read it. And you're going to find out that's what's going on now. Do we have fear? No. We don't have fear. Because you got to know where you're going. Now, what if you are responsible for someone hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ through your adjustment? How important is that? You want to change them? for today or for eternity. And even you can't make them get saved. Only the Holy Spirit can make them saved. But you can speak the word of God to them. Boldness. Oh, I want to be doctor. You can be a doctor. And let them spend time in hell because you want to be doctor. <laughs> Think about it, guys. And girls. We need to be real. We need to be faithful to our Lord. We need to give him the glory. And I'm telling you, our God loves all of us. You're a sinner, he loves us. You're not a sinner, we all are. Okay, he still loves us. So what are we going to do? Are you willing to start a group? This, uh, what do you call it, Saturday Night Live? That was started on the back of Margate here with the office that we had because the chiropractors and the staff were just like, they were just, no. So we started Saturday Night Live because Saturday Night Live was on TV. That's how it started. And it's very humble, but I don't know. I, who, who started this? Did you have this one started? Well, Danita ran it in St. Augustine for about 20 years. Nobody called me. <laughs> you should have told me. You, you spoke. Yes, you I did. Oh, I did? Okay. I spoke, I spoke in her office. She was yes. There. Yes. Yes. She was there. Where, where am I? Where am I? Your name is Tom. Well, so... All, all I want you guys to know is that you have a purpose higher than what you can dream of. And your God, through Jesus Christ, loves you. And if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, what the heck are you waiting for? You don't think you're a sinner? I'll tell you some of mine, and you say, I don't even talk to you anymore. This is real, guys. And when you look at this world, and you see what's going on, you hate President Biden. I pray for him. I don't hate him. He's just like the rest of us. So what do we say? It's not the politics. It's not the country. It's only Jesus Christ. In Christ and Christ alone. There is nobody else that's more important than you three people. And you need to bring that into your practice. And you say, well, I'm ashamed of that. I don't want to be a religious guy. Well, don't be a religious guy. Be a Christian. There's a difference between being a religionist and being a Christian. There are people that go to church every week going to hell because they never accepted Christ. There's people that don't go to church going to heaven. That's a fact. So God's not looking for a perfect person. He's looking for people to know him as Lord and Savior, but he's also, as chiropractors, guys, Jesus laid hands on people. Don't let them get you creepy. Like, yeah, I can't stand I got into it. Have you ever adjusted somebody without popping bones? You know about that? You can just lay hands. Jesus, when I was impressed with Jesus, laid hands on people. Like my dad. I, I did horrible. But it's cancer. Mm. I can do it. That's how I realized, like, there's something here that I just don't get. Because we were talking about innate and nerve conditions and all that stuff. 
But I'm not into that because this world is not our home. This world is going someplace, but I want to be part of the teaching and preaching of Jesus Christ. That's more important than chiropractic. So if you don't have Jesus Christ, God, however you want to put it, but only by the name of Jesus are you saved. But you can open those doors, but believe it, that you are called in this profession for a reason. It's not to make a lot of money. You can make a lot of money, but you want a 300 a day practice? Suffer. Work. Quit your baloney. Be real with your people. Tell them the truth. And those doors can't stop people from coming in. But you got to understand, it don't save a lot of money all the time. It's not about making money. He will provide for you. But you have to give him the word. So, Siga Poots. Because Siga, Siga's not alive anywhere, is he? Yeah. Well, he's, he's a, he was a good friend. He's crazy. But uh, he was a good friend. He was, uh, I didn't, he was like a, a real, uh, he's a singer, I don't know how to say it, <laughs> but uh, he was like 600 something a day. And I asked him one time, because he's kind of a smart mouth too, I said, so how did you see, how do you see 600 a day? He said, one at a time, one at a time. See, it's not gonna be you, if you give it up, your ego, your doctor, just lay hands on them. I don't care. They don't care. They want to be. They want to be touched by the master's hand, and that's not you. But you have been gifted with hands. You've been gifted with a profession that lets you touch people. You know how precious it is to touch a person. You have a, a, a girl that comes in, and you get to touch her, and you're checking. You, what what an awesome just honor that is that they trust you so much. Do you tell the truth? Are you going to have them at a uh, orientation? Is what we call it. Or are you just going to say, "Yeah, come back three times a week for the rest of your life"? Okay, and they may want to come back three times. I don't care. Whatever they want, but they got to know why. That we knew the bone. And this is what Sigafu said that I really loved about him. He's off the wall, but I loved him. He said, "We move the bones, but God does the heal." End of lecture. You see how you lecture it? Hey. We move the bones, but God heals. What else you want to know? <coughs> you tell me. Well, I want to talk about the central nervous system and uh, this and that. I don't care. We're all going to die anyway. We're all sick as dogs, most of us. Okay, something's always going on. Is it not true? How do you feel? No pain? No, we hurt like crazy. <coughs> so what? If God's got you alive, he's got a purpose for you. So what we're saying is this, guys. Step up to the plate. Be a child of God that loves God and Jesus through Jesus Christ with everything you got, with all your heart. Don't be a lukewarm Christian. It seems there's a lot of Christians up here. But more than down the south, what I have to say. But it's good people. But good people don't go to heaven. Save people go to heaven. So if you are not involved, but you don't want to, I don't want to go, I, well, that's your choice. But I'm telling you, people, or not understanding how important it is that you can lay hands on people. <coughs> Have you ever adjusted somebody just by the touch? Just by the touch? It happens all the time. So understand the power of God that you have through Christ. So your walk, are you reading your Bible? Yeah, I read my Bible sometimes. Oh. Do you read your Bible? That should be, that's the word of God. He wants to talk to you. You talk to him, but he wants to talk to you. And if you ain't open in the book he wrote, I don't believe that. I don't care what you believe. Just read the book. You will believe after a while. That's how we do it. Step by step. And if you're not open in that book, put it on the table. Read one word a day. Get the habit, and the rest will follow. It is the word of God, guys. Part of chiropractic, you guys are wanting, and I don't mean just guys, but guys and girls, you guys are healers through Christ. But what power that God allows us to touch people. Do you understand the, the holiness of touching another person? We take it for granted, don't we, as chiropractors? But it's a holy obligation that we have to be truthful to them. They're coming to you for a reason. It's no accident they come into your office. 
So if all you are is about, I'm a doctor and I'm going to do it, this is what I do. Well, you're taking all the glory. Step back. And I'm telling you, God will, God will overflow that office. Like, and, and I never, I can't tell you how I saw so many people because I, when they say, did you see them? I go, no, I didn't see them. But he saw them. But do you want to surrender that much of your life? He may be waiting for you to slip up. That's all you can do, which is everything you can do. What would it be like when you get to heaven, God willing, and God is willing, if you see all these little patients lined up? You know, I came in the office, my neck hurt, and you said, we move bones, but God heals. And that changed my whole life. With what's going on in the world, you think we got time to wait for next week? You think we have time? I don't have time. One of the best things about the bladder cancer, I found out, hey, no matter how healthy I try to eat, it's going to happen. <coughs> and if I die, I see his face. I win. And if I don't, I got my age rattled. <laughs> Married after 27 years of singleness. That was a miracle. Well, I'll tell you what, that's another story. So, guys, all I do is encourage you. One, it's not about chiropractic. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about knowing God. It's about pointing your patience to the Word of God. And if you don't have the discipline to open the book, welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. All you've got to do is open the book. And when I started, I just opened the book. I didn't read it because I didn't understand squat. Little by little, God gives you that wisdom because you've got a hunger for his word. He's looking for people that love him first. He said, I'm the Lord thy God that shall have no other God before him. And that includes chiropractic. That includes your wife. That includes your husband. That includes your kids. That's real. He gave his life so that we could live. So do you want to be part of that big picture or do you just want to sit and be like everybody? I would say it's time, guys, that we had some warriors step up and do his bid. So after this, all I ask is that you pray in Jesus' name and that you ask him what now. They're coming for me soon. I, can, I hear the silence. I escaped last night out of So, guys, I, I, I don't know what to say except please know where you're going, but now be ambassadors of Christ. I, I just can't get over the fact that we as chiropractors can touch somebody and a guy will bring in his beautiful wife and say, check my wife. How, what an honor that is. And we take it like it's nothing. Mm -hmm. And then we see miracles happen in chiropractic from God, not from us. And we take the glory all the time. That's chiropractic heals. No, God heals. You see what he does for your practice when you start giving him the glory and you get your butt out of the way. That's a medical term. <laughs> <laughs> so, Father, we want to say thank you, God, for this group of yeah. wonderful people, Lord. And I pray that for someone that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that they would know that all you have to do but ask. Forgive me from my sins. Be my Lord and my Savior. Just like the thief on the cross, no religion, just a relationship with Jesus. I pray that we go and teach the gospel, but we also touch and love with our patients, with our friends, with our family. And that you, I know, would be with them. And I pray that you would live with these people within, and they would be guided by the fresh wind of the Holy Spirit, the fresh power of the Holy Spirit, because you have so much to do, and we are the hands of you, Jesus Christ. Lord, we are honored to be chiropractors and chiropractic families, but what are we going to do with the gift you gave us? BJ, Didi, said N.A., they knew something, but they weren't Jesus. We know that it's you, Lord Jesus, that heals in you alone. So God, I pray that we'd have that burning fire to serve you first and take care of our people and knowing the honor and respect that we have just by seeing them, by talking to them, by touching them. Lord, I pray that we don't make God our money or, or, or make money our God and that we would serve you first. Love of money is the root of all evil. 
We pray for our families that we would stick together, that we would love our wives and our husbands as you have loved them, that we would be as men priests of the home. And that's what you want us to be, Lord. So we thank you, God, for this group of loving people, so loving. That is a gift. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, next month we have Ernie Panza coming June 10th. That'll be at my office down the street. And uh, just I read some of this guy's book and it's really inspirational. So I'm uh, really looking forward to it, Ernie. And um, we're going to be excited to have you up in a couple weeks. So um, from St. Augustine, it's been Saturday night. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, brother.